When learning programming, there tend to be some pitfalls that beginners of the craft tend to trend towards. They will notice that they can do a lot with just the basics, and the higher end knowledge is somewhat superfluous for what they want to do. Well, it is true that the core concepts are actually quite small in size and easy to learn. Once you understand the base concepts like variables, conditionals, maybe arrays, you can pretty much find a way to do whatever you want. But the knowledge that goes further is not useless, because you'll quickly find the skill of programming is not about creating code that works, but rather creating code that works well. Code that uses only the basics will lack organization, and organization is key for countless reasons. To allow code to be expanded upon in the future, to help debugging, to facilitate working on code with multiple people as a team. This topic is far too grand for this tiny video, and there are a huge number of big books on the subject about proper code organization, but today we're going to be looking at the last reason, coding as a team, and trying to understand some good practices. There's a concept known as modular programming. Basically, it refers to the concept of splitting your programs into distinctly separate subdivisions. You make lots of little separate parts that all do different things independently of each other. There are a lot of other terms that go along with this one. Coupling, which is something you want to have little of. Cohesion, which is something you want a lot of. And object-oriented programming, which is a big blanket term for a whole design philosophy that embraces a lot of these ideas. But it would take too long to go over all these terms. There's really only one that I want to go over with you today, and that is black box. A black box is a self-contained program or piece of a program that follows these modular rules. It's designed to do a job without you as the user ever having to worry about the details of that job, and instead only worry about its input and output. You can think about it metaphorically as a physical device with an opaque plastic shell over its components, and only spaces for data to be fed into and sent out of. You input the parameters, it goes inside and does a bunch of who knows what, could be anything really, big or small, and then your result is output on the other side. Of course, black boxes aren't actually physical devices, well, except for those things in aircrafts. And neither are they magical. Some person actually did create them. You just don't need to know who or how. Unless you are said creator, then it's reverse. You know how your black box works with all its inner mechanics, but you don't really know how it's going to be used, except for a few rules that you stipulate, called the contract. The creator of the black box knows how it works, but the user, who is in turn a creator of something else, need not. It's the ultimate example of making individual pieces and connecting them together to make something even bigger. By now I'm sure you're thinking, well, gee, that sounds great in theory, but it's probably not very practical. Oh, how wrong you'd be. Once you start thinking about things in these terms, it's not hard at all and takes only a marginal amount of extra time to make your programs work in this way, and the payout is substantial. Let's take a look at an example. Here we have a game I've made. It's a pretty simple game, really. Let's do a full playthrough and see how it goes. So, we have this blue screen here, and if I press spacebar... Whoa! A black box appears! It's a metaphor, get it? Actually, it's, it's really more of a dark gray. Uh, anyway, if I press spacebar again, well, another one shows up. It's a lot smaller, but I think it still has a shot against the big one in this epic fight. Another hit of spacebar, and they start moving towards each other. And... Boom! They collide and both disappear. And there you have it. Roll credits. Yep, just me. Well, okay, so really, that wasn't horribly exciting. One out of five stars, you say to me. But hold that thought, and let's take a look at the code. If you look here, there's actually a part of this script right here where we name a number of modules to be used for various different things. They're all set to basic right now. Why don't we change this here module to something else? I have a list here, let me see, uh, how about this one? Alright, let's try this again. So, it seems to start the same. We hit spacebar and... Die! Oh, neat. It's funny because old YouTube jokes, am I right? Alright, so the rest seems the same. Oh hey, thanks CDI guys. You and your hideously awful cartoons. Let's change some more. What if we change these modules right here to be the same one as the last one? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, cool. It's like they go together as a theme. Alright. This is starting to get much more interesting. We can change these, too. Now the little box moves in a sine wave sort of pattern. 
And Ganon, well, he actually sort of does fall into a pit. Into pit. See? It it's a nice touch. I won. How about a new look? It's funny because new YouTube jokes. Wow, thanks, Lauren. The best part is that we can mix and match these. Do we want this movement pattern here and this explosion here? Perhaps we want Twilight to fight Ganon. That'd be a pretty cool fight. Not into the pit! It burns! Some sort of thermal nuclear owl detonation? Of course! So, what does this have to do with programming? Well, everything. These aren't just magical modules that I'm plugging in here. I made these. And I didn't make them out of some kind of absurd amount of unreadable arcane code either. Have a look. This is Python, a language that prides itself on conciseness and readability, and it should show it here. All of my modules are actually very tiny. Each of these files are one of the modules, and they contain methods for each type of role they can fulfill. Each of these methods can have whatever code I want inside of it to do the thing that I want it to do. It can either be big or small, simple or complex, gloriously impressive, or stunningly basic. But most of the time, it usually tends towards the small and simple approach. What this all means is that anyone could make one of these module files. Just open up a text file, type in a bit of stuff with the appropriate method names, and there you go. They could be switched out for use in the main program without the person who is editing the main program having any idea how they actually work. As long as they obey the contract, you just swap it and done. Give this a try for yourself. Below is a link to all the code from this game. You'll need to install Python and Pygame first. Just follow the instructions, it's not too tough. Then away you go on your coding adventure. If you're not too experienced with programming, that's alright. This is the perfect opportunity to learn. Start with the pre-existing modules as examples, and try making new ones that are similar. Use trial and error and experiment. That's half the fun of something like this, and it will be a great learning experience as well. And, if you're an experienced coder, feel free to try something really impressive. Then, when you're done, have fun mixing and matching your modules with those of other people, and see what cool scenarios you can come up with. In a way, all of you will have created a game together, despite having never even communicated. It's magical, isn't it? So long.